Please stand. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we've come and gathered here together this morning that we might celebrate the life of Thomas Webster Hardwick, Jr., better known to all as Tommy, and that we might also bear witness to the good hope we share in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Hear then these words of Holy Scripture. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. And we hear Jesus himself say, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. O God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. So show us now your grace, that as we face the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all those who've kept the faith, finished their race, and who now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. And especially this morning, we thank you for Tommy Hardwick, whom you have now received into your presence. Help us to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years. And bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your eternal home. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
I am Kendall Hardwick. I am the daughter-in-law of Papa Tom, as we called him. Um, on behalf of the family, I want to thank everybody for coming. I, um, it's meant the world to us and the family to have so many call, text, and we know there's a lot that can't be here, and we understand that for obvious reasons, but we want you to know that it's meant really the world to us, so we appreciate y'all for coming. Uh, Jill, and this is all your fault, <laughs> you asked me if I would get up and speak, and those that know me love, know that I love to speak. <laughs> I like to talk a lot. I don't have a problem talking about things I know and things I think I know, right? And Papa Tom was definitely one of those things, but I just pray that the Lord will help me get through this. Um, those that also know me know that I'm a very emotional person. So with that, you're going to have to bear with me on this. <sighs> So, forgive me if I don't make eye contact with everyone, and it's on purpose. I don't want to make eye contact with too many people while I'm talking about different things. But um, as the end was nearing with Papa Tom, you know, Jill, TW, and myself, we were going through trying to, you know, make sure that we let everybody know what was going on with his condition. And as we did that, it was a couple common themes that definitely came to mind. One was the connections he made. He made great connections with every single person he met. As we would discuss, we would say, you know, T.W. would say, you know, this person had a very special connection with my dad. Or, you know, this person, they just, they just had a, you know, unique connection. So it was always about the connection. The second common theme that we would talk about, and this might upset some of you, because I know it was probably one of those things you thought it was something special between the two of you, but... It's just the way he made you feel, knowing that you were his bud. He referred to everybody as bud. And he <laughs> greeted you as, hey, bud. He would give you a kiss on the forehead, like Daniel would talk about giving his mom a kiss on the forehead and saying, I love you, bud. That's just what he said to people. So those are definitely two of the common themes that would come up when we were talking. But obviously, those special connections is what we really will remember him for. I'm not sure if it was because he was an only child and he just needed those connections with other people, or maybe it was just the charisma he had. He just had a way, and a special, special way with women. It seemed like they would do anything and everything for him. So those connections, and, and we definitely appreciate all of you that would reach out to us and tell us those stories of your connection and what he meant to you. It's definitely meant the world to us to receive those phone calls from people we haven't heard from in years. You know, different people would text, and we didn't really realize the depth of their connection. But, you know, he touched a lot of people's lives, and it meant the world to us to hear. Whether it was a cousin or a friend, that was more like a brother. Whether it was a church pew mate, a fellow committee member, a restaurant owner, they would all want to share their sweet connection with us. The hunting group, what a connection they had. Why did I make eye contact? <laughs> oh. And those are the stories that we will carry with us forever. Whether it was Mr. Charles, as he would refer to him as Mr. Tom, they would drive, one time they were driving up to Virginia, and what, they didn't have, they didn't have heat in the car, and it was cold, cold, cold. So they had stopped at every single gas station on the way up to get warm. Or whether it was Chuck Garrison telling us that he'll never forget Mr. Harwick driving down the road with his red man chew, a wad of bubble gum, smoking a cigar, and drinking a sun drop, all while driving that old Bronco. <laughs> Steve Dagenhart said 22 years ago they were on a trip to the Super Bowl, one he'll never forget. He enjoyed coaching the kids in baseball together, and Mr. Hardwick and him would never miss a boys' baseball game. He said he was truly blessed to have a friend like him. The special connections we shared with his cousins that were more like brothers to him. The cousins in Florida that also shared the same bald spots as Papa Tom did. <laughs> they, he never missed a lobster season, and his job was to measure every lobster. And he took great pride in making sure that we all knew what he was doing and how he was doing it. We love listening to them talk and listen to their belly laughs. It was a sight to see for sure. Cousin Jay, he was literally raised like a brother to him. They once won three member guest golf tournaments in one year together. 
Um, not sure if you know, but Jay is, uh, was, for many, many years, the golf coach at Virginia Tech and a great, unbelievable golf um, player. So, you know, of course I had to ask. I was like, well, did Papa Tom really carry his weight in these tournaments? And surprisingly, they said he did. So that's pretty amazing. Talk about a connection, the one he shared with Butch Martin. His best friend. Since fifth grade, they were such good friends that they tried to make it official and become brothers. <laughs> <laughs> they figured out that uh, after many, many years that maybe they were better just as best friends. And we loved hearing the stories of Butch, you know, that he shared over the last days with us at the hospice house. He was there talking with us, telling the stories. You know, it really brought a calming manner to us, and we really appreciate that. And um, he told us about Tommy shooting him. <laughs> yeah, never knew that one. I never knew that um, Mr. Harwick actually shot him. Uh, you'll have to get uh, Butch for the details of that, but it was friendly hunting fire. <laughs> so it definitely bothered Tommy more than it did Butch. Or was it that Tommy uh, wrecked the car coming back from cutting grass in Virginia? You know, he tried a couple times to really put you under, but he, he did not. You know, they shared just so much together, and the love of the, between that they shared was unbelievable. I think one of his um, good friends, Bill Hayes, put it best. He said, friends like him only come once in a lifetime. I could go on and on about these special connections. Dan Zeroff and his etiquette printing family, L. Close that visited every single day at hospice, the Gribbles that shared a pew at church, the waitresses at the restaurants. We're hosting a party tomorrow, and we hope that you, know, you can all come out there and share your stories and hear more from the hunting crowd, hopefully, there. But these are all stories that I was told. A lot of these stories I did not personally witness but I did witness the love that he had for his children. He participated in every single family event. You know, sometimes it was hard, but he did it because he loved the kids. Jill was his baby girl. He had an amazing connection with her. He enjoyed attending church with you. He was so proud that they could be at church together. I don't think there's a day that he didn't pass by your house. It wasn't because he was being nosy. He just wanted to make sure that you knew he was there, and he wanted to keep that connection going. Obviously, I can speak forever about the relationship of T.W. and his dad. T.W. and his dad had a unique relationship. It was amazing. It was strong, and it still is. They talked every day. He was a man of routine, and about the same time every day he would call. He never missed one of his games. They shared the love of fishing, hunting, golfing, pretty much every sport you can think of. Every outdoor activity you can think of. Fun being a wife of that, but, you know, <laughs> they shared it all. CNTW care for his dad these last few months has been amazing. You know, you always love your husband, but to see him go through that was pretty amazing. You know, he often questions, you know, did he do enough? He definitely did. He did more than enough. He was there for him, and his dad was there for him, too. His grandchildren. He loved you very much. Sloan was the first grandchild and the only granddaughter. He caught her puppy dog. <laughs> and he caught her that for the first two months. And I was like, oh, that's a cute name. And then finally he looked at me and he said, Kendall, what did you name her again? <laughs> <laughs> so he'll ever, forever be, she'll ever, forever be his puppy dog. Thomas um, and Hardwick and Harry, they had the joy of having him at the games. Hardwick and Harry had to um, have a football game while Papa Tom decided to pull up in the middle of the football field and, you know, get a great parking spot. And Jill, you know, was like, Dad, what are you doing? And, you know, the um, YMCA director was like, I can't tell Mr. Hardwick to move his car. <laughs> they were literally having to do plays like around, you know, the front of his car to get around. And Thomas, Webster Hardwick IV, he's carrying on the family name. His grandfather loved watching him play baseball. I think he missed less baseball games than T.W. did. The moms at the baseball game would cater to him. I would look over and he would literally be double fisting, <laughs> two slushies. And I was like, what in the world? You can't have that much sugar. All the moms were like, yes, he can. Yes, he can. But watching his grandchildren was definitely 
a happy place for him. Papa Tom and I had a special relationship. Being a hardwick for 20 years and together 25. We lived with Papa Tom while we built our house. He lived with us several months while he had, after he had a heart surgery and then the last five months. Having three Thomas Webster Hardwicks in one house, I feel like I should be given an award for that. <laughs> As they say, apples do not fall far from the tree. We would banter back and forth with each other, respectfully, playfully, but that was our relationship. I think I might have been the only woman in his life that ever gave him a little pushback, and he needed that, and he, he appreciated that. We definitely loved each other. He treated me like family, and he was treated like family to me too. T.W. and I took a marriage class at church, and they talked about love language. And my love language is affirm positive affirmation. That's what I thrive on. That's what I need. Talking about that, Papa Tom didn't ever had to take a class to know my love language. He always knew that I needed to hear those positive words. After scoring a baseball game, he'd tell me, hey, bud, you did a good job with that. And I'd laugh and say, oh, Papa Tom. And he'd say, no, seriously, you did a good job with that. And, you know, um, it just meant the world to me. Even those last few months, I would be frustrated, changing his clothes, escorting him to and from the bathroom, getting him to his chair, and then he'd look at me and he'd say, hey, you did a good job. Thank you. You did a good job. Now, if only TW could learn the same lessons, we'd be going somewhere. <laughs> now, Papa Tom was the busiest non-busy person I've ever met. He always had somewhere to go, somewhere to be. And of course, I'd give him a little pushback and say, no, you don't. You don't have anywhere to be. But he always did, so I know he wants me to wrap this up as quickly as possible, so I apologize, Papa Tom. In the last few days, I've caught myself wondering who was there to greet him at the gates. You know, was it his parents that were waiting patiently for their only child to finally arrive home? Was it Uncle Shannon waiting to play ball or go hunting? Was it Howard Knox, Lad Barnes, Bob Hill, Miss Close, Big Bob? You can't imagine how big the crowd must be. Then I remember, you know what? There's no way anybody could ever get to him. There'd be a cute little white Maltese, little web, growling, his teeth showing. He wouldn't let anybody near his Papa Tom until he was able to get his love first. So I pray that Papa Tom has gotten little web to calm down, given him some love, and others have been able to greet him. Today you all came because of your special connection with our Papa Tom or because you love someone that also had a connection with Papa Tom. I pray that we too can live like Mr. Harwick, like Papa Tom, like Tommy, like Mr. Tom did. Take the time to make those special connections. Go to your grandchildren's games, attend those special events for your friends, speak to your waitresses, get to know people, be present, and love people. Well, Papa Tom, job well done your work here is done we will live through you each and every day through the connections we make until we meet again i love you very much Let us hear now these words of comfort and assurance that come to us from the Old Testament. Our first reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading is from the prophet Isaiah, the 65th chapter. For I'm about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall they be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build homes and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offsprings blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy in all of my holy mountain, says the Lord. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We also hear these words from the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm so very grateful to Kendall for sharing memories from the family and so many of you about Tommy today as we have gathered to celebrate his life. I spoke with Tommy a time or two after his fall, but I, I do wish that I'd had a chance to know him in his prime, because I know that I would have liked him. Yes, I wish I had a chance to see Tommy out there in the woods, hunting or fishing or running bird dogs at the field trials. I would have loved to have watched him coach baseball, football for T.W., picking up and taking home kids from all over town, becoming a mentor and a teacher for the young men of this community long after they stopped playing ball for him. I really do wish I'd seen him pull his car up there on the field to watch, uh, watch the boys play the football. That would have been something to see. I understand they do have a no parking sign there now. I guess they figure they could do that at this point. I wish I had a chance to know Tommy watching out for his neighbors as the official mayor of Navasi Street, spending time with his friends of all generations, driving here and there across the state to visit favorite restaurants or historical sites. 
I am sure that I could have learned something about design and construction of boathouses from Tommy and Butch Martin. I know I would have been blessed to serve with one of the most dependable and active members here at Unity Presbyterian Church with a regular pew over there on the right side of the sanctuary. And I would never turn down a good bowl of ice cream, especially if there was fudge involved, one of Tommy's favorites. All those of you who gathered here today have your own memories and stories of Tommy, and those memories will comfort and sustain you in the days that are to come. They are a gift from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit continues to speak to us in a variety of ways, but certainly also in God's word to us, to provide us with those words of hope and comfort. Words of hope, like we heard in the prophet Isaiah, that God is still creating a new future for us, and that one day there will be no weeping, no crying, no sounds of distress, because the new day of the Lord has come. Words of comfort, like we hear in the 23rd Psalm. For it is when we find ourselves in the darkest valley, in the shadow of death, that we need one to comfort us. Fear of our own mortality and sin threatens to paralyze us. And yet we can see that even in the darkest days that we are still led by one called the Shepherd. One who provides for our every need, who finds still waters to calm our troubled souls. One who leads us in paths of righteousness and justice and peace. One who allows us to enjoy the fellowship of family and friends surrounding meals. And one who promises that even when things appear bleak, that goodness and mercy will never leave us. For as Paul writes, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We've done nothing to deserve this gift of love and grace. Actually, we've all deserved God's condemnation instead. And yet God's love for us is so great that while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son and given this new life both here and now and in that time to come. Today we do weep. We weep for we have lost a friend, a grandfather, a father, a dear brother in Christ. And yet we can be confident. We can even boast, according to Paul, that through Christ's life, death, and resurrection, both Tommy and each of us have been saved and have now received reconciliation. Therefore, we boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Hope, even in the midst of death, does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Praise be to God. Amen and amen. Let us pray. God of grace in Jesus Christ, you have given us a new and living hope. We thank you that by dying, Christ has conquered death, and that by rising again, he promises eternal life. Help us this day to know that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. O God, before whom all generations rise and pass away, 
We praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially today, we thank you for your servant, Tommy, for the gift of his life, for the grace you have given him, and for all in Tommy that was good and kind and faithful. We thank you for his faithfulness as a loving father, father-in-law, grandfather, mentor, and friend. We thank you for his love of life and how he embraced it with such joy and hope. We thank you for his wonderful sense of humor, for his deep devotion to his family and to this church and to this community. We thank you for his love of your creation, O God, and Tommy's commitment to its conservation. We thank you for his loving kindness and concern for others rather than himself. And we thank you for his deep faith in you, O Lord, which defined his life. And now, O God, we give you thanks that for Tommy, death has passed and pain is ended, and he has entered into that joy you have prepared. O God, in Jesus, you promised many homes within your house. And so give us faith to see beyond touch and sight some sign of your kingdom. And where vision fails us, help us to trust your love which never fails. Be with T.W. and Kendall, Thomas and Sloan, with Jill and Scott and Henry and Hardwick and of all of Tommy's family. May they know in a special way your comforting and sustaining presence in these days. Lift heavy sorrow and give us good hope in Jesus so we may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to that glad heavenly reunion through Jesus Christ our Lord who was dead but is now risen to whom be honor and praise now and forevermore.
Amen. I do invite you in the hope in which we stand and the hope in which we believe to stand together today and declare what it is that we believe using words found in your bulletin from the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing together, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound.
hear these words of hope. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Let us pray. Now into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Tommy Hardwick. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. As our service here in the sanctuary concludes, we will be making our way to Unity Cemetery for a brief committal service. If you would like to just walk, we'll, as the family will be walking through the church, through the Fellowship Hall to the cemetery, you are more than welcome to follow us as we make our way that way. If you would prefer to drive, please do follow in behind the hearse as they make their way around to the cemetery together. Following that time in, at the cemetery, the family will return to the Fellowship Hall and have a few moments to speak with you or, or greet you there. If you'd like to just go straight to the Fellowship Hall and wait for the family, you are more than welcome to do that as well. And the family does also invite you to join them on that Saturday um, evening at the Bob Reed Field Trial Barn for a time of memories and stories and fellowship together. But as we go forth today, may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will, working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.